Hello there and welcome to my 14th 3D tutorial. And in this tutorial I will show you how to do RuneScape movement in 3D. Now, I've been kind of surprised at how often I've been asked this question. And well, I figured I'd finally answer it. So here's how to do it. First I will show you that it works. Right click. And then it just creates that to show that um, that's what it's moving towards. And I click here. And then I go there. I can also move the camera around to prove that, uh, yeah, you still have options. There we go. So yeah, that's uh, what I can do. Now please don't post some stupid comment saying that, um, well, I can easily do that in 2D, because it is very hard to do it in 3D, but it's pretty easy to do it in 2D. In fact, it's elementary. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. Alrighty. So in player, you know, I just use my easiest 3D ever. You're gonna want to watch that tutorial to figure out how to do this now. That's yeah. Um So I don't do very much different in this one. Except for, okay, so now we actually have to do the clicking sequence. Now I'm instead of going through all the code, I'm simply going to explain it to you. So I'm gonna make it so that you can't see the floor and you can actually see what's under it. So you can figure out actually how I'm doing this. Might help a little bit. Okay, so we're loading it again. Okay. This looks really weird, right? Notice that that little middle square here is always around my mouse. So the basic idea is it is that I have a bunch of squares surrounding a little square in the middle. And whenever the mouse hovers over that square, the whole thing moves in a certain direction. That way, um, the thing will usually always be in the exact center. Basically, I've just a um, little bit of engine here, making it so that this um, object is always over my mouse. And so then, well, you can basically kind of figure out the basic technology of that. Now it's not always perfect, but it's always but it's pretty close. So yeah. So as you can see if I move my mouse a little bit to this side, then it moves that way. Same. And then I after I do this, then I draw the floor over top of it. That way you can't see it. So yeah. That's the now it doesn't always work. Of course, it is a little glitchy sometimes, but oh well. This is about the best I could get. Now, there's another way to do this. I wasn't really going to go into that, and that's where, um, if you have a whole bunch of blocks around your guy and they're always following your guy, and then when you click on them, then it gets the X and Y. But I really wouldn't want it to do that because it gets even more glitchy sometimes, and it's a lot harder to do. So yeah. This is the best way I suggest to do it. So yeah. So anyway, I will show you basically, um, this is the middle square here that I'm drawing. This is um, mouse collisions. I had to use a different set of variables for each one and now I'm just drawing up um, its size and stuff. Basically, so now I'm just keep. So basically, it's all one object that draws it. I said global left press. I'm going to create this go to x equals this x. So basically, it'll jump towards my position no matter if my mouse is over it or not. That way, it may not always jump to exactly where my mouse is, but it'll be pretty close. So go to here. It doesn't really do anything except for draw the cylinder. And then player, well, he'll just. Um, if it goes equal to one, he'll just move towards the um, little go to sign. Now you probably don't want to draw that there, I was just for demonstration purposes, I put that there. Yeah, so that's about it. Now, of course, this is just more agent stuff that you're probably not gonna. Well, you're just probably gonna want to copy it instead of trying to f figure it all out, because it's very complicated and weird. Um, now you're just gonna want to. Um, so now, once again, I will show it to you without, like, with the floor there now. And then you can, once again, see what the actual effect is. So you're probably going to want to download this. 
and test it out for yourself to see how good it works. Now if you go really, if you put the view really down, then it's probably not going to work that well because it's going to have to move up and down really fast and I don't have it moving that fast. So if you're more viewing up, which is what you would be doing more often, then um, it works practically perfectly. You could probably figure out how to do it if you want a mini screen as well. And if you can't, then I'll probably put out a tutorial later if you if a bunch of people ask me to. So yeah, that's all I have to show you for this 14th 3D tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.